Project Setup and General Tips. If this is your first time using Reaper, it's going to look very similar to what you see in front of you. And I'm just going to go through a bit of project setup and general tips that make Reaper work similar to Pro Tools. First thing you need to do after you install Reaper is to get the SWS extension. You need these to get Reaper working really well and especially to get it to work with all of the features that I have in the full suite. This makes Reaper so much better. You have to download the SWS and SNM extensions. The install looks like this for Mac and sometimes it won't let you just drag. So to know where to put these things, you can just go to Reaper, go to options, and then show Reaper resource path in Explorer. You'll bring that up and then all you do is drag it into where the instructions tell you to go. So into user plugins. So if you just drag this into user plugins, you're good to go. Let's get this mixer out of the way. And you can go into view and then just click on the mixer and it'll go away. Also, this timeline is on the bottom, which is super annoying to me. So if you right click and you go to docked in transport position, you can do above ruler and now your timeline is in a similar position to Pro Tools. And if you want it to be in the right time, you can right click and you have a choice of minutes and seconds. I like uh, time code. And then you can actually right click in the main menu to also show exactly what um, time you would like. So I like time code. So now they're both set up and we're ready to go. I hate when I press play and the screen moves with the play cursor. I hate that. So that's the first thing that I change. So if you go to options and automatically scroll view during playback, if you turn that off, now it's back to how I'm used to using Pro Tools where it's playing and I can edit and then play stop and it comes back. The next thing to set up is the project itself. So if you go to file and then project settings, you can set up a few things that gives you a default setup. So I always do 96K, you can choose whatever sample rate you would like and whatever tempo, you can then save as default project settings. Then go to media and go path to save media files. This is what you would have for the audio files, for instance, in uh, Pro Tools. So you wanna add that to it. Then you can say the bit depth and um, what, what kind of file you would like to save it as. Um, then you can go to video settings, advanced. It's just look over all these things to see what you would like to have set. The main thing is having audio files set as where your media files go to. Save as default. And then next, we want to go into options and preferences. And this is where we're gonna live for the rest of this part, which is to set all of these to general Pro Tools type settings. First, we go to paths, and we're gonna set up the paths that the folder structure is under. So if you look here, I have this as render, recording. So that looks like this in your folder structure. So render is where exports or ex or rendered files or bounced files would be. I call it render, but you can call it whatever you would like, bounced in Pro Tools or export. Audio files, of course, from the project setup we just did, and then backups, which we'll get to in a second. The storing all peak cache files here is very important. Reaper works similar to SoundForge where it stores these peak files for like all your files. And it's super annoying if you don't put it into a generalized path. So I have these going to just my user's documents folder. Just a folder for all of those to live in that I don't have to see. Now let's go look at the backup. So as I showed you earlier, there is a backups folder and I'm gonna show you how you can actually set that up in Reaper. So what's nice in the preferences is you can actually use this find button and just type whatever you would like. So I'm going to type in save timestamp and it goes to the actual settings page where this is located. And if you pressed it again, it would find all the versions of that. So if I said fade, for instance, you can actually search through all the settings just by keep on pressing enter. But let's go back to the save timestamp. 
and see the backup settings. So these are the settings I like to use, and it's very similar to how Pro Tools works. Um, I save file reference. I keep multiple versions. I save it every three minutes uh, when not recording. Uh, then I save a timestamp to an additional directory, and this is that backup folder that I showed you earlier right here. So all of my backups then are saved in this little folder. Really cool feature, you can actually set the default fade in for when you press the fade button. So I have this as default in my full suite as D and G, just like Pro Tools, but it defaults to this curve and you can select whatever curve you would like. I really like that feature. Automatically mute any track at a, at a certain volume is super annoying to me. It means that if your volume is too loud, it actually mutes your track. I don't like having that, so I actually turn that off. It's a feature that, that Reaper has. I'm not sure if you want it or not. I like to turn it off. So the next thing I want to talk about is volume envelope and pitch envelope. So by default, the volume and pitch, I think it's four and plus six, which is actually not that good for clip gain. So when I'm doing clip gain, I can only raise it 6 dB. I find that not very uh, usable. So I set these to plus 24, and I set the semitone range for pitch to 20. You press apply, and now your pitch range and your volume can go to 24, and then your pitch range can go to plus 20 or minus 20 semitones. Very nice and useful to set these correctly to how you like to work. The next thing is the volume envelope for the track. So that was clip gain that I just showed you, but volume em envelope is actually by default on a separate lane which I find pretty annoying, especially when you have lots of tracks. It's very hard to see all of this stuff. So I actually like to put it on the track itself like Pro Tools has. But there's some features here that you might wanna check off to not have. One is that show new envelopes in separate lane. That means every new track you have will always have envelopes in a separate lane. So I unselect that, I press apply, and then if you insert a new track, now it won't be in a new lane. It's the volume envelope for that track is in the track itself, which is like Pro Tools, which I like, rather than before, which it separates, separates into a new lane. Also, I like to have automatically show affected envelopes when moving. I like to have that unselected because look what it looks like when it's selected. It automatically pops up the envelope, which is really annoying and very weird. I'm not even sure why that ever would want that. But if you unclick that, press apply, then that doesn't show up anymore. Super nice to have that unclicked. So the other thing I'll show you is then if you already have envelopes on other tracks, there's an easy way to put that back to look like this last track where it's on the track itself rather than a separate lane. So if you select all the tracks, you go to this actions list, which we'll talk about later, but for now, we'll go to this actions list, and then if you go toggle volume envelope, and if you go to toggle volume envelope visible, then it'll show all of them visible, and then you want to envelope lane, then you want to dis display all visible envelopes in lanes for tracks. Boom. Now they're all in tracks. And with your settings that you set up, now every time you open a volume envelope for the track, it'll now just be on the track. So that's a useful thing to set up. Last but not least, let's go back to Options Preferences and go to Video Items. And you'll see Disable High Resolution Peaks for Video Items. This is by default not selected. And what it means is here's a video file and you can see the waveform looks pretty. It looks like all the rest of the waveforms. The problem is when you go really up close, Reaper chugs and it goes real slow when, you, when you're really close and zooming in. So if you select this on and you press apply, the, it'll look all blocky, but man, it works way better, the zooming in and out. So I highly suggest for video files, yes, it'll look like 8-bit. But 
It'll make zooming and editing way faster. I highly suggest that you select this on. And that's it. That's it for general tips and project setup.